Thank you for uh, those kind of words. Uh, I wasn't expecting any span on my sermon about those kind of words. Were well, you not expecting them? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, last Saturday uh, I, I was having, having a dream, uh, and I, w- I was uh, telling my wife that I, I walk in the church or the school, and as soon as I walk in, I, I heard Pastor uh, came in and was telling me, "Oh, I, I need you to preach next Sunday." And the following Sunday, because uh, I'm not going to be here. The f- I'm, I'm going to be here too busy this Sunday, and I'm not going to be here next Sunday. So I hope that you'll be here, so my dream will not come true. <laughs> but at least this one came true. Uh, talking about the community, uh, uh, you know, this church has been a great supporter, not only for Better Archers, but for me personally. I find a family here. Uh, find you guys. I find this little bit of small church that uh, is a family church that uh, cares for people, cares for hearts, cares for souls, uh, cares for everything in the community. So um, this is the kind of the church that everybody will dream on, but nobody wants to be in it because it's a lot of work. I say this before, I mean, this, is, this church will challenge us because we're too small doing, big thing, doing the big things in the community. So um, saying all that, I'll just say that uh, God has blessed us uh, with this church so we can help the community uh, in need. But uh, let's change the subject, and how about if you uh, go with me, because we're going to make a trip right now. Well, let's go to Rome. You want to go to Rome? And it's ho- so hard, it's going to be... It's going to be a tough and rough trip to, to get there, okay? So if you have dreams, if you've uh, been dreaming about how to get to Rome, um, keep dreaming. But you have to wait in God, because God will take you there, all right? So, but you will make it to Rome. That's definitely, uh, when, when God has something for you, you will make it to Rome. There are so many obstacles, many barriers. There are wells, many things that are getting between our daily walk, isn't it? I mean, there is so many, even when you get up in the morning, it, you go back home in the evening, there are so many things getting, getting up, uh, uh, getting between in our daily walks. There are, uh, there are strong winds that slow us down and uh, keep us from getting to where we wanted to go. But this is what I can tell you this morning. If God is willing to take you and guide you to where he wants you to be, it won't matter what gets between because it's his will. So hang in there. There's, there's, there's going to be so many obstacles that are going to get in your way, but God is going to take you to, to where he wants you to be. Uh, I can tell you that for experience. I mean, and sometimes you don't even want to walk with God because you don't feel that that's the way or you don't understand that that's our way that he wants to take you, but that's his will. And nothing is going to stop him to take you to accomplish your goals or your dreams. So uh, this is the, uh, the Apostles uh, Paul's story, and it might be yours too. Uh, Luke is the one who's writing this book. We're going to look at chapter, uh, Acts chapter 27, uh, and we might take a little bit of 28. Uh, but this is the, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul's story, and it might be yours too. Luke is the one who's writing this book. He is the one who's uh, telling us uh, the story. And not only that Luke is going in this tree with Paul, he experiences the same uh, storms with Paul, the same struggles with Paul. So let's see what Luke tells us in this story. It will be uh, good to read the whole chapter, but uh, it will be long. So... Let's just uh, choose some verses that can tell us uh, the full story. And talking about full story, don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, Pastor Kevin will tell us another, another full story. So um, you will make it to Rome. And uh, um, let's, let's read those uh, uh, verses. When it was decided that we will sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were headed over to a centurion named Julius who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded the ship from Atherman about, about to sail for ports along the coast to province of Asia. 
And we put out to sea uh, Aristarchus and Med Macedonian from Thessalonica was with us. The next day, we landed at Sion. And Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there, we're up to out to sea against and pass it to the lee of Cyprus because the wind were against us. This is where it starts to get uh, rough, okay? But before, uh, if, you, if you can see, Paul is going to, Luke is telling us that Paul is going to be, is going to go to jail, he's going to go to prison. But he's uh, handed, he's, he's been handed to Julius. Julius is so kind is that before he starting with this trip, he tells uh, Paul, go to your friends. They might help you. They might give you a hand. God bless us with, uh, with daily bread and a small gift of kindness and convenience, a text or call from a friend, a hug for someone not even a specter, or even a kind word for some stranger. When we go in a tough situation, when we, go, we, want, we, when we are going on a situation that not like to be in it. So God will take you on a, uh, on a rough trip, but at the same time, he will provide for you so you will be uh, thinking about how uh, uh, generous God is. So friends, just remember how generous God is with, uh, with us. That is how Paul feels right now. He feels like, okay, I'm going on this trip. It's going to be tough. But I, God is taking care of this. Paul knew from the beginning that God was taking care of him. Since the beginning. Because it was not a custom that uh, centurion will say, okay, you know, Paul, let's, let's go, go to your friends and, and let, tell them to help you a little bit. You don't go to uh, uh, Williamson County Jail and, and expecting somebody to give you food or, or, or clothes uh, before you go to jail, right? They, they're not allowing you to have that. So this is the story of Paul. Paul received grace from God. We might say that he was from Julius, but it was from God because God had already planned something for him. So here's the first obstacle for Paul. Once Paul was in his way against, it didn't take long uh, for, for, for problems to start. The we were against us, Acts 27, 4. And that much time have been lost, they have the winds against them. I have never seen uh, I, I went on a cruise uh, a couple of years ago, but it was so much fun, I, I, I wasn't experiencing something like this. Even so, when we arrived to Nashville next day, it was an hurricane in, in Florida, but me and my wife enjoyed this cruise. We had so much fun. Um, we, they, 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 there is nothing compared to what Paul is experiencing here. So I don't know if you have been in a, in a hurricane or on a, a storm. I have been in a storm, but not in a hurricane. So we have to make decisions sometimes when, when, the tor when the storms come to us. And we have to uh, understand and, and see how can we uh, uh, un see uh, and handle those storms. So there's more problems coming to, to Paul when he say, we move along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Heavens near the town of Lisa, or Liasa. Much that has been lost and sealing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the day of atonement. So Paul's warned them. So problems are coming. When, when you think that everything is going to be easy, it was the first day. And the second day, problems keep going. So knowing that the Jewish holiday traditionally fails late in the year, a lot of scholars uh, estimate Paul's voyage took place around the end of September, maybe early October. Uh, the beginning of uh, a tomb Jewish is a, a holiday. This is a warning from Paul. Sometimes you don't need to be a prophet. The Bible doesn't tell that, that Paul prophesies this. The Bible tells us that Paul warned them about what was going to happen. But it was September, October, so a lot of people were expecting, you know, uh, a winter storm. So, uh, Paul, when Paul warns them, they don't, they don't listen. 
How many have you listened to Pastor Kevin's sermon? Not many times. <laughs> I blame myself. Not, not many times. <laughs> you know, uh, and sometimes uh, uh, Pastor Kevin, I told you so. I'm warning you. Uh, I've been through this a lot, and uh, I'm going to mention somebody's name here, and I, I hope I, don't, I won't embarrass her. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, she was always, she's always warning me about things. Luis, don't do this. Luis, do this. Luis, move this way. And sometimes I don't listen. And then she comes, I told you so. <laughs> right, Ray? <laughs> I told you so. I told you not to go that way. But you don't listen. So this is the case for this, uh, uh, for the centurion, because they, don't, they didn't listen to Paul, um, to Paul when, uh, let's, let's go to chapter uh, 13, see if we can get it. Oh, well, it's chapter 10. Uh, let's read that one. Say, um, well, we have to make decisions uh, that's going to make you or break you. And when we, when we make decisions, depends on how, what, what decisions are we making. If God is with us, then we feel good, right? But if he's not with us, then we feel like, where are you, God? I thought you were with me. Yeah, I was with you, but you were not with me. That's how God is, you know. If we're not with God, he's not against us. But we against our own. Because we now listen to when he's speaking to us. Man, I can see that Overboyer is going to be this, this, this troll, this, disastrous and bring great loss to a ship and cargo and to our own lives also. So better be careful where we're going because it's going to be a great loss. So guys, you better listen to what I say. Uh, since the hardware was uh, unsustainable, to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail uh, on hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was the harbor I created facing both south, uh, southwest and northwest. Have you ever been in a meeting where uh, it's about to make decisions? Let's get in a committee meeting and make decisions. The majority, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll follow the majority of the decisions. Whoever, uh, you know, if, uh, we, don't, we don't care about what God says. Let's do it because the majority are here. And sometimes in the committee meetings, we don't make decisions if we don't have the 40 or 50 percent of the attendance, right? And I'm talking about God's business. I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, a, a different corporation or company. We're talking about churches. They're making their own decisions without consulting God because the majority of the people were around the table and made the decision to help or not to, or not to help, to go or not to go, but they didn't ask God. Or maybe they did ask, but uh, the, the person who was decided to, to guide him say, you know what, God told me not to go this way. Oh, but the majority are here. So let's... I'm sorry, Pastor, but this is, this is not about you. It's about the majority. I know you're the pastor of the church. I know you're the leader of the church. I know you're the, leader, the spiritual leader, but we're not going to listen to what you say. We're going to seal anyway, no matter what, no matter what happened. So we suffer the consequences. And this is what happened to these people. They suffered the consequences because they didn't listen to Paul. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Before they can find a safe harbor, Paul warning proved true. This is where the story starts f fascinating me because it's so uh, uh, relevant to and similar forces and similar choices that you and I uh, face every day. Uh, Paul's story continues. Uh, before long, I think uh, I don't got that one. Okay. Before... Uh, very long, a wind and hurricane force called the Northeast um, swept down from the island that she was caused by the storm and could not head into the winds. So we gave way to it and we and were driving alone. 
In many ways, this is the point of the story that she was caused in the storm and how the, uh, the those of war responded. The way they responded, it wasn't good. They give away to it and were driving alone. Is there a better image for how we feel when we cast out of guard? Out of guard? How do we respond when we go in the storms and then God, you know, tell us, hey, this is not the way. This is not the, the way you're going. How do we respond to that? When we cut out of guard. When we are not listening to God and he is telling us to go this way, but we go in that way. And then we suffer the consequences. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we call with uh, scary uh, diagnosis. Sometimes we, we call with a heartbreaking betrayed. Sometimes we call with a lost opportunities. Sometimes we receive a bad news and we out of guard. We're not guarding ourselves. And then we decide, uh, what happened? Why? Why did God do this to me? Why didn't I want it this way when, was telling me, when God was telling me? <clears throat> Friends, sometimes God's life uh, spins out of control, out of our control. And we feel like a passenger trapped in this, cru in this cruise ship during these hurricanes. Because we don't know how to get out of this. We don't. Even when God's telling us, go this way, we keep going the, different, uh, uh, the opposite way. Who is your God? What is your faith? Is your God the same God as Paul is worshiping? Is your faith is the same faith that Paul, that Paul has? Not all the time. You know, we're Christians. Uh, we pray, and um, we're all Christians here, right? So I can, I, can, I can talk about us, right? All right. Um, we always try, to, and, and we, we know this uh, Bible verse say, uh, don't pray the name, don't mention the name of God in vain, right? We all do. <laughs> we all do. Because we pray and we pray and we not always do what God uh, uh, tells us to do. So that's the, the name of God in vain, praying. <laughs> oh, I, I'm doing it all the time and I, I feel so bad. Did I mention the name of God and made all the... Oh, God bless, bless your heart. God bless you. Are you really mean that God bless me? Even when we're men, oh, God bless you. Are you really, you really mean it? No. You mean the opposite. You insult me? I don't believe that God is going to bless you. I don't want God bless you. Even if I say he's not coming from my heart. So, gentlemen, who is your God? What is your faith? Are we worshiping the same God Paul's uh, worshiping? Let's look at verse 22. But now I urge you to keep you up to your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the sheep will be destroyed. Last night, listen to this, an angel of God to whom I belong and who I serve is still beside me. Now, we can talk about the angel of God, okay? In the Old Testament, a lot of scholars say that it was Jesus Christ appearing to them in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there is only a couple of verses. I can see that in chapter, uh, Acts chapter 10 and, and this one. That the angel of God came and showed to me. So it might be God himself showing to Paul and telling Paul, listen, to me. And, and, and then Paul uh, come and give this. The angel of God came to me last night. And he told me this. He was so sure that it was God who was telling him what to do and how to do it. You know the, the sad thing is that sometimes we feel God's voice and we don't listen to it because we're afraid of what other people will say. 
Oh, he's too spiritual. Oh, he thinks he's walking on water. Let's not be afraid to talk about God. Paul was the only, well, him and Luke was the only probably three or four people that were in that ship that they were Christians. The rest of them, they were like, you know, they were, they were Gentiles. They were going to Rome. But he wasn't afraid to talk about what God has told him the night before. So, and say, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand a uh, trail before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep your, cor- your courage, man, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Look, look at this. So keep your courage, man, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. I have faith on God that what, what, what he told me, that's what's going to happen. That's encouragement for me. This, this verse is just encouraged for me. Man, how many times I have tried going the opposite way. And God keeps telling me this way, this way. And he has telling me to go the, the way that he wants me to go. And using not only the Bible, he's been using pastor, he's been using you. <laughs> go this way. But I'm, kill, I'm, I'm, I'm still keep going the opposite way. Listen, God is going to take you to Rome. Even if you are trying to go or somebody want, wants to try to take you to the opposite way. Because not only, there is not, not only a way that, that you can you can't take the opposite way, but there is sometimes this people, other people will try to take you to a different way. Thinking that this is the best way to get there. We'll get there. Let me take you. And they take you to the opposite way, isn't it? Brothers and sisters, no matter how harsh the storm is in our, in, in our lives, uh, how devastating is impacting us, you get to choose how to respond. There are times where you feel that you have no choice and that we are powerless as the storms tosses you back and forth and determines, uh, determines who you are and who you, who you think you are. But that is not true. You always have a choice about how to respond to the storm. The storm is not determining who you are. God is. And when you choose to trust God and keep going by faith, you know better, brothers, that the storm has no power over you. So this is just a little bitty storm. Consider to the power of God. And if, if, you, if you remember when, when Jesus Christ just standing and he's, he stopped the storm, just raise your hand and told the storm to stop. That's how powerful God is. You might, you might go through a storm right now. Let me invite you to depend on Jesus Christ. Let me invite you to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to stop that storm. Or even if he's not going to stop that storm, he's going to take you through that storm so you can make it to where you're going. But let's depend on him. When you choose to uh, trust God, the story does not determine who you are. It might toss you around. So get into the land safely. When you think the storm has ended, things keep going. Where am I going? Where am I pushing? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to read verse 20, uh, 42 uh, to uh, 44. They're not in the, um, the PowerPoint. Uh, but when you think the storms are ended, things are getting worse. Definitely. Verse 42. The solid is planted to kill the prisoners to prevent any of, the, of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and keep uh, them from carrying out their plan. So uh, you see, Paul is receiving the, the grace of the centurion. I, I will say he's receiving 
the grace of God. You know, he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to the land. The rest were to get there on planks or other pieces of the ship. And this way, everyone reached the land safely. We made it. We're home. Woo-hoo. All right. Amen. We made it. Hold on, hold on. Let's see what happened here. Once safely on, on, on shore, we found out that this island was called Malta. These Icelanders show us unusual kindness. In Spanish, let me tell you uh, what it says. It tells you that uh, they were mean. It wasn't good people in that island. But they built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul got in a pile of brushwood, and as he put in on the fire, a viper. Listen to this, a viper drive out by the, by the heat, uh, fastened itself on his hand. They made, they made it to the land safely. But more problems are coming. When you feel like everything is going, is going to be better in your life, and then a viper comes to you, what are you going to do? What are you doing? Listen, I believe that if Paul wasn't depending on the power of God or in the power of the Holy Spirit, I believe that Paul will make this decision. Oh, I'm going to die. It's a viper. It's a killing viper. So now I'm, I'm not recommending you to just, just go get a snake and, and put it in your hand. No, don't, don't do that. Don't try to prove uh, that you have a lot of faith. Because God will take you to places where he is going to show you that you can have a faith. So it doesn't have to be a viper, okay? I know a lot of churches will, will uh, do this. And, and their, their congregations, they bring uh, I mean, snakes just to try your faith. I mean, we, in my life, I believe that I've been uh, tested by so many vipers in storms. But depending on God is the best way that we can walk with him. So when the uh, Islanders saw the snake hanging from his, his hand, they say to each other, this man must be a murderer. For how he escaped from the sea, the God's justice has not allowed him to live. People will criticize you. People will look at you. People will say to you, oh, how many sins has he committed? Look at him. Look how God has punished him because of his sins. Wow, this, this is kind of the lives that you're being through. What? What did he did? You always question humans. You always question, we always question people about how they walk with God. We question the daily walk with God. And it is terrible. I have done that. Yeah. Oh, why did he did that? Why he lost that? Well, he has no financial. Why? I mean, he was so spiritual. Why he did? Oh, his, uh, his kids are in trouble. He's not a good father. You know? He was diagnosed with, uh, uh, with cancer. Oh, he might be terrible. We kind of see that he committed. So all these things, people will, we're going we're gonna to criticize you. But Paul shot, uh, shoot his, the snake off into a fire and suffer no ill effects. Okay, this, this is the point. When somebody comes to you, when people come to you, and you know that you are walking with God, and you know you have the power of the Holy Spirit, just shake it. Shake it and you'll be free. Because if you listen to the comments that people do about you, then you're going to die. How many times have you heard of, of people who are dying because the doctor is going to tell you you have this time uh, to live? Immediately, they'll die because the doctor already 
have diagnosed that they're going to die. Brothers and sisters, and it is when we need to trust God. It is when we need to depend on his power and let the Holy Spirit be taking control of us. He's shaking free. Let's be free. A viper cannot control your life. Let, me, uh, let the Almighty God control it. Let the power of God control your life. Shake it free. Shake it. Just shake it. Go ahead, shake it. Because if you don't shake it, you're not going to make it to Rome. If we shake it, we'll make it to Rome. What are your dreams? Where is your goal? Where are you going? Who is stopping you to get to where you're going? What is it that is stopping you to where you're going? Maybe it's just you. That you're not depending on God. That you're not depending on the Holy Spirit. But let me, let me tell you, when we put this together and we walk with God, we will make it to Rome. We'll get there. But let's depend on God. I'd like to finish with this. Um, uh, if, you're, uh, if your strengths are, are not enough, if you have enough power, uh, take this with you for the rest of the week. First, shake it free. Be free. Because this is what Paul tells in 2 Corinthians uh, 12, 19. But he said to me, my grace be sufficient for you. My grace. So I am enough for you. You don't need nothing. You don't need no more. Let me see if there. Right there. Come on. Yeah. My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made Perfect when? When you're weak. When you have no power. My power is with you when you have no power. So don't try to be Superman or be a hero trying to uh, play God's role. Let's depend on God when we're so weak. I know it's hard to do it. I've been there. It's so hard to depend on God when we're so weak and we call up on God. God, where are you? I would like to take the example of Paul. He's not my hero anyway in the, in the, in the Bible. He's not one of my heroes. I like Peter or Joshua for, uh, before Paul. But this is a good story. You say, I like to depend on God when I'm weak. He keeps on going. You say, therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power might rest on me. Can you just imagine walking with the power of God in the streets and be covered by the Holy Spirit? That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my witnesses. Look at this. Take a look at this. And insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We all have gone through this difficult times. So when I am weak, I am strong. And this is, this is what I like about being free. Another scripture for Paul, 1 Corinthians 2.12. We'll finish here. We have received, what we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of who? Of God. The spirit of who is from God, so that we might understand what God has freely given us. So, brothers and sisters, let's shake it free. And make it to Rome. Take those two verses home and read it so we can be free. Took me two or three weeks to understand that I am free through this sermon. God spoke to me and my struggles. So I hope that God speak to, speak to you today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for being our God. Forgive our sins, Lord Jesus. Forgive us when we are not listen to you when you tell us to go the way that you're showing us. But instead of that, we take a different way. Lord Jesus, help us to understand that you are our God, that you are powerful enough to guide us and to take us 
to accomplish our dreams, to accomplish our goals. Lord Jesus, if there is something right now that bothers us, please, I just pray that you will remove it so we can be free and we can take it free and we can walk with you. Allow us just to follow the Holy Spirit. Because that's how you tell us to walk with you. We pray this morning that we will walk out of here, Lord Jesus, that you will be our guide. Lord Jesus, thank you for being our God. We praise in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ.